whole Bhagavad Gita is chanted in Anushtuk Chanda meter, where it has 32 syllables. Each verse is two lines. One line is 16, one line is 16 syllable, second line is 16 syllable, and it will be sung in a specific meter. Okay, so uh, this is as the introductory slide. So the here you see I have for this is just the name of the chapter, right? So the first on the top you will see the Devanagari in Sanskrit, but I have the English transliteration. How things are pronounced in English. For example, the first word in Devanagari is Atha. Right? Atha is now. Prathamo. You see, you can actually read out this exactly as it is. And this is called, the way it is written, is called the IAST. International Alphabets of Sanskrit Transliteration. How each letter transliterated in English. Right? So you will see some marks like this. I will create a resource folder where I will have the English pronunciation for each of these Sanskrit alphabets. You will have an English word, how it will sound in that particular English word for that alphabet. For example, S with a dot, S with a dot, it's pronounced as SH as in sharp. You see, you roll your tongue a little bit. Sharp. When you say the word sharp, S-H, however it sounds, this S dot sounds like that. A with a bar means it's the elongated A, like in father, F-A, like the long A, fa. That's the long A, fa. That is A with a bar. So, V, sha, da. And when there is no long, when there is no bar, it will be a. So, a, a. Then similarly for E, E, there will be I and I bar means long E, like elongated E, E and E, then U like U and U bar. So I will share a couple of slides with this Sanskrit alphabets and how they are pronounced in English. What will be the equivalent sound in an English word? You can take a look, but it's once you see it once, you will get the feel of it. And of course, I will be explaining. For example, this is the beginning of the first chapter, not the first verse yet. First verse, first verse comes next. So every chapter begins like this. Atha prathamodhyayaha arjuna vishada yogaha means now the first chapter. And then the second part of this is the name of the chapter. Arjuna Vishada Yoga. Like I said, every chapter starts with the word Yoga and whatever comes before that is the topic of the chapter. Here, Arjuna Vishad means the despondence of Arjuna. The despondence of Arjuna, how he became sorrowful as he went to the battlefield, right? So, <clears throat> Atha Prathamodhyayaha Arjuna Vishada Yoga. This is how it starts. Now, the first chapter, Arjuna Vishada Yoga. That's the name of the chapter. First verse is this. And this is how the slides I have created. The first two lines is the actual Sanskrit verse. The second part is in English. Exactly what it is there up. It's in English in, in the transliteration. And I have broken it down in words so that it's easier for pronunciation. If you look at this, the first word, I have hyphened it out so that we can break it up because that's how it will be pronounced when I chant it. So one example, how the singing, how it will be sung. <clears throat> and you will notice the specific meter. Before that, before I sing it in the tune, I will show you the syllable. 32 syllables in total, 16 in each line. Look. Dharma, Dharma, Kshetre, Kuruk, Kshetre, Sama, Veta, Yu, Yut, Sa, Vaha. Dharma, Kshetre, one, Dharma, Kshetre, Kuruk, Kshetre, Sama, Veta, Yu, Yut, Sa, Vaha. 
So 16. Each line has 16 syllable in total 32. And the meter is this. And again, once you hear this, it will come to you because that's how exactly everything will be sung. Now, this one. Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Mama Kaf Pandavaschaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya. You see the, you, are you getting the pattern? Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha. Mama Kaf Pandavaschaiva. Kimakurvata Sanjaya. And the first part is Jitarashtra Uvacha. Jitarashtra Uvacha is the name of the king. This is the father of this evil side of all the sons who is now asking Sanjay. His name was Sanjay, who was his minister, who had this divine blessing of seeing things even from far. So he was asking his minister, Oh minister, what did my children and the other, son, other king's children do as they went to the righteous field of battle? He is asking this. Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre Samaveta Yuyut Savaha Mama Kaf Pandavaschaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya. You see the pattern? Dharma Kshetre Kurukshetre. Then the fifth one gets up, sixth one gets down. So, dharm, dharma kshetre, four syllable, dharma kshetre, then kurukshetre, kurukshetre, samaveta yuyut savaha, ma, second line, same thing, mama kaf pandavaschaiva. Sanjaya. So, you guys can try with me slowly, the word by word. Let's do it together. Dharma Kshetre. Dharma Kshetre. Kurukshetre. Kurukshetre. Samaveta. Samaveta. Yuyut Savaha. Yuyut Savaha. Lead and follow one more time, Tara. Okay, so this time lead and follow also again. Dharma Kshetre. Dharma Kshetre. Kurukshetre. Kurukshetre. Samaveta. Samaveta. You youth Savaha. You youth Savaha. Mama Kaf. Mama Kaf. Pandavas Chaiva. Pandavas Chaiva. Kimakurvata. Kimakurvata. Sanjaya. Sanjaya. Yes. And everything will be like this. For example, if I show you the second chant. Prishtvatu Pandavanikam Vyodhanturyodhanastada Acharyamupasangamya Rajavachanama Pravit You see? One time, if we get it one time and we know which syllable the voice is changing, we will get it. Dharma Kshetre. One more time. Dharma Kshetre. Kurukshetre. Kurukshetre. Samaveta. 
Tamareta. Yu yut savaha. Yu yut savaha. One more time, the first line. Dharma kshetre. Dharma kshetre. Guru kshetre. Guru kshetre. Samaveta. Samaveta. Yu yut savaha. Yu yut savaha. Mama kaf. Mama kaf. Pandavas Chaiva Pandavas Chaiva Kima Kuruvata Kima Kuruvata Sanjaya Sanjaya Nice. Yes, so very good. Well done, everybody. The first chapter, all the chants are exactly in the meter, in this meter. 16 syllables. Dharma Kshetre. You see, I split it in fours. Dharma Kshetre. Kuru Kshetre. Samaveta. Yuyut Savaha. Mama Kaf Panda Vashchaiva. Kima Kurvata Sanjaya. So it's 16, 16, 32. That's the beauty of this meter. It's sung in this specific meter. So it will be sung, right? There is no, of course, there is intonation of voice, but in Vedic chanting, we have this um, flat pitch, upper pitch, and it's more sort of like an alert. And here it's more sort of fluidy. It's like a more liquidy, watery dance here. It's like more singing. Vedic chanting, I think, is more fire to me. If you think of the elements, Vedic chanting is more fire. This one is more earth and water. I mean, more water and air, even, even air, you can think. Because it's moving, you see? It's fluidy. Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Mama Kaf Pandavas Chaiva Kima Kurvata Sanjaya You see, like that. Now, the so first, first question to you guys is, do the slides look helpful, like in the sense... Is this, like okay? them, yeah. Yeah, is this okay? Yeah. And the English transliteration with the Devanagari? Because if at, if at any point of time you need to refer to the Sanskrit, I want to have it together. So you can match it. And by the way, this will be also... I mean, I, the, say, I can't read Sanskrit. I don't know. No, it's just but, but, but he, yeah, but here is the <laughs> thing. This will be a fantastic way to also learn the Devanagari. Because look at this. You can identify the script and the English, right? Because... It's exactly what is written on the Sanskrit in English, right? So you can identify, for example, look at this part here. You see K-U. So this one is the first word, right? Every word is word by word split. So Dharma Kshetra, this part is the first word. So if you notice this letter here, D-H-A is this first one. So I am just saying that once you see it many, many, many times, if you match it, what is what? Then it will, I, th I, I am just thinking about it as I am seeing it. See it many times. You will be able to identify what letter is what. And of course, I will share the, the, the couple of slides where you will see all the vowels and all the consonants. There are 13 vowels and 33 consonants in Devanagari scripts. Okay. In those vowels and those consonants, Consonants are the ones that take support of the vowels to be pronounced. For example, here the DH, only DH, it takes the support of the vowel A, which becomes DHA, dha. So we say dharma, right? So dha, it takes the support of the vowel A. So DH plus A becomes DHA, so dha. So like that, these are the consonants, 33 consonants, like DH is one consonant. There are 33 of those. And I will share the document where we don't have to stop chanting for this because we saw, we, we were both able to chant. All three of us were able to chant without knowing the Sanskrit. But I'm just saying, as we go along, move along, you can keep looking at that. And there will be English word. Every time I uh, teach a Vedic chanting class, I also have those two, those slides prepared like that. So these are the vowels in, in Devanagari. You see, starts with A, A, and 
these English translations, this is exactly how you will see in the slides. And how they are pronounced is written on the right side. For example, the first one, A. It's A as in up. Up. You, up, up. When you say up, the up. Or rural, the A as in rural. rural. That A in rural. So, rural. Uh, rural. Not rural. Rural. Right? Rural. Uh, short. The second one, A with a long bar. This is with this will be a as in father, like long a. You see, fa long a, father. So like that, all the vowels, i as in Phil or Lily, the i pronounced as in Lily, which will be like i. E. So i with a bar on top will be a elongated e. For example, feed, f double e d, feed, meat. Let, let's meet, right? Meet, M W -E T. So elongated. So every letter for your reference will be given like this. These are the vowels. And then there are 33 consonants I mentioned. And these are the consonants. You see on the left hand box, all the 33 consonants are listed, right? They are divided into groups based on which part of the mouth is used for pronouncing, right? So on the right hand side, you will see what they sound like. For example, if you take the first one, K, K, A, K as in come, or K as in seek, K, seek, K, or come, not, not the C as in sight, C, I, T, E, that's sa, not that, come, ka, like in cat, same as C. So, next one is ka, as in khaki, the color khaki, right? Ka, khaki. Then G as in girl, like G. Then the next one, fourth one is GH as in aghast, G, G with an aspiration. There are these five segments on the left hand box. You see alphabets grouped in fives, right? The consonants grouped in fives. Every second and fourth of these five have an aspirated sound. For example, first, first row, look at the first row, second and fourth. First one is K, second one is K. If you have a hand in front of you, you will feel the air, k, aspirated sound. So, k, k. You say with me, k, 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 with some air coming out, aspiration, k. Third one is g, fourth one is g, g, aspirated. G, 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 k, g, 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 you will feel the air in the hand on the fourth one. Similarly, for the second row, second and fourth will have aspirated. So, cha. First, you have to know CA means you have to look at the right side. CA, CA will be pronounced as here. C as in chum. C H U N chum. Right? So cha. So cha and then cha. Cha with the aspiration. Cha. Cha, cha, ja, ja. Cha, cha, ja, ja. Right? Cha, cha, ja, ja. So these five rows, every second and fourth will have an aspirated sound. Then the dharma, the dha will, is an aspirated sound. Why? Because look at this, the fourth line. Look at the fourth row. Does it, you see DHA? The fourth fourth row, fourth letter is the aspirated. So, ta, tha, da, dha, dha. So dharma, dha. That's the aspirated, that's the consonant we have been using in that first slide. You see, so these are all that will be used, but we don't have to, we don't have to learn by heart from the beginning for us to chant. Like we saw, we could chant. But this will be helpful if you want to fine tune your pronunciation. Just come back to this couple of slides, this one and this one again and again, to identify what letter you are finding it difficult to pronounce when you practice at home or when you listen to the recording, just have this on the side. You can print it out even and say, wait, this letter, oh, this is the one. So how is it pronounced? Then you take a look on the right side that which word, for example, the sha, S with a dot, S with a dot, S dot as in sharp, right? So there are three S in Sanskrit, one as in servant like or soap or sun, 
you know, the sa, the dental S, where the tip of the tongue touches the teeth. Sa, like soap, you know, soap. But so, when you, soap, different S. When we say sharp, the, you roll yeah. the tongue a little bit, right? Sharp, sharp. And then there is another S at the bottom of this line. S-H as in shard. The middle of the tongue touches the roof of the mouth. Shard. You see, different S-H. Shard, sharp, soap, or servant, or sun. Sun, sharp, shard. Three different S in Sanskrit. This will be one thing that I would say that you can put more focus on. Others are easy. This is also easy, but just the positioning of the tongue in the mouth. One, the dental one, which is the sun soap or the servant here in the world. The S, the tip of the tongue touches the teeth. Servant, soap, sun. Sharp, S dot, the tongue rolls up, curls up, touches the palate. Sh sharp. And shirt, shirt is the middle of the tongue touches the roof of the mouth. Like that. Okay. So no, no worries. Just keep a, uh, take a look in these ones, in this couple of slides. So here is the chanting part. How you will see is that whenever you come to this chanting slide, you can start directly from this. But if you want to refer, you can have those two pages print out and refer just to fine tune your pronunciation. There are lots of classes and things which talk about the discourse of Bhagavad Gita. I plan to do that, of course. I mean, we, we need to know what we are chanting, right? Just the literal meaning. For example, here, and for the meaning part, I will share a document where you will find the meanings in English word by word of all these. I will share those. And I will also discuss, for example, for example, what we just practiced chanting today. The meaning is, King Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjay, after my sons and the sons of King Pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, the name of the pilgrimage, desiring to fight, what did they do? That's what the meaning of the chant. So like this, what my plan is, since the focus is on chanting of these slokas, we will not spend too much time on the discourse. But there, I'm sure that there will be verses which will be fascinating in terms of what it's being said you know because the whole setup of this is very practical when somebody is in a battlefield the arjuna arjuna represents us the human beings who face all sorts of challenges in our lives bhagavan krishna represents our higher consciousness who is our soul you can think higher consciousness who has no delusion who has who thinks who, who can see things clearly without any delusion without any coloring of our mind without any false knowledge so you can think of arjuna speaking to his higher self higher consciousness and having a discussion having a conversation and getting some answers to his questions that he keeps on asking which we all have in our lives like how then what does yoga mean then what you are based on what you are saying what does and you will see how many different ways bhagavan krishna describes what is yoga that's why Srimad bhagavad gita is one of the prime courses prime textbooks of yoga okay of yoga and also in our practical lives because all these questions that arjuna will be asking and we will be chanting we will see that will be our questions many a time in our lives so my plan is not to go too much details into the discussion of every sloka, but of course I will be explaining the meaning, literal meaning. There are two things. One is the literal meaning of this and the other thing is the part part or the explanation, you know, the, the discussion. So time and again we will have this or if you think we can discuss more, just you can let us, let me know during the class. We can have a little more discussion on that. And... Um, my, my plan was to have the focus on the chanting part of it, like this meter, every shloka we go and we chant in this specific meter. Yes, and like I said, I will be sharing resources. I will be sharing a document with the links where you can actually read it out, the description of it. Because there are so many, if you just type Srimad Bhagavad Gita, so many that you will find who talks about the meaning. And I will share some authentic ones in the sense that where they come from good source. So you will, you will, 
you can read those purports at your own leisure time and we can focus on the chanting because not many sources you will find you will you will find many sources where they will be chanting they will be just chanting the slokas but not as a workshop so to chant together which was that's why i chose this as the focus so that to help people to find the tune of it to find the rhythm of it okay and and one thing is of course some chapters will have smaller number of shlokas like chapter 12 and 15 has only 20 verses compared to chapter 2 which has 70 72 verses so depending on that the number of classes we need will be different right so for example the first one we have 47 so if we do say 4 Five, four or five or four, we will take about twelve classes, twelve sessions, right? And then before we begin the second chapter, we can take a break or not, depending on if you guys feel like motivated to directly jump into the second chapter. We can always do that. Like I said, I am prepared and I will be continuing making slides for the other chapters until eighteen. So it will be all driven by you guys. Um, and then if you feel like um, we can take one week of break to chant this whatever we chanted or listen to the chants to get the rhythm we can do that and then start or we can start immediately after i from my end i will be prepared anyways uh, it's just whatever we think as a group i think that's all i wanted to discuss today as the orientation yeah do you guys have any questions regarding the plan or regarding the logistics or things like that no i'm happy that we're doing this yes thank you thank you yeah, for bye-bye. Yeah, thank you for being a part of of the very first launch of this, and that's all I had to share for today. And if we don't have any questions, then I will be creating, I will be sharing the link where I will put the slides. I will share all the slides of chapter one already, and document where I will be adding resource links for where you can find the meaning. Few links, so you can just start with one if you want to know the meaning, and word by word also meanings like that. and in our class we will be mainly focusing on this singing part <laughs> singing and the knowing the of course knowing the literal meaning of each verse goal is to have it live right and record together yeah. goal is that take care and okay. uh, and see you tomorrow namaste okay. Okay. Okay.